Um, welcome to our session on Amazon S3 Fundamentals in Security and Access Control. Uh, my name is Akshat, I'm a Senior Product Manager. I'm Brian Cutler, I'm a Principal Engineer in S3. Fun fact about Akshat is that he used to teach middle school uh, math to more than 70 kids in a classroom. Yeah, and uh, Brian likes listening to smooth jazz, which is, I think, kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> For our agenda for today, uh, we're going to talk about how we think about security internally at S3, um, the Amazon S3 security triad, so that's encryption and transit and addressed, access control and audit, uh, and then sum up with some key takeaways. Um, to get us started, I'd like to recap the AWS shared responsibility model. Um, Amazon S3 is secure by default and leverages the security of AWS's global infrastructure. S3 is designed to satisfy the security requirements of the military, global banks, other sort of high sensitivity organizations, and our infrastructure is monitored 24-7, offers multiple fault isolation capabilities. Improves resilience, allows for encryption of all the data flowing across the network before it leaves our secured facilities. Um, and these capabilities are you know, part of our shared responsibility model. We provide the functionality, um, and then you know, we expect customers to use that functionality. So breaking, down, breaking that down to what it means for S3, uh, we provide server-side data durability, uh, so data stored durability in Amazon S3. Uh, we provide the security functionality. We provide accurate and reliable logs for any transactions that happen with your data. Um, on the customer side of that equation, um, customers take care of client-side security. Uh, they use the provided security functionality, uh, and they can inspect and act on logs. Um, thank you, Brent. Yeah, so this secured model of where you are trying to share the responsibility between the service and the client is uh, relatively common. But what's different about Amazon S3 is that it's built differently from the beginning to include durability, security, availability, and performance. Uh, every time that we launch a new feature, every time that we uh, tweak an API, we're going to have a review internally about the durability and the security impact of those things. And we make sure that those same uh, durability, security, availability, performance goals uh, are met no matter what the scale of the features. We try to make sure that that applies whether you are a, a, a tiny startup you know, with just a few objects in S3, or if you're a huge enterprise with petabytes of storage, that we're providing those same uh, high strength features, uh, the kinds of things that, like you said, the banks and the military rely on, uh, that we are making sure that those are available to you as an S3 customer. So when we talk about security tools, we're also talking about scaling. And so you're gonna see that several times throughout this presentation. We're going to talk about a uh, sort of a, a gradient or a spectrum of tools that go all the way from very granular, very uh, tight, very specific controls, all the way up to more global, more holistic aggregate views that uh, serve an entire enterprise. And like Ashok mentioned, we're going to be breaking this talk down into three different sections. We're going to talk about encryption, or, or how we keep prying eyes out of data as it is stored access control to make sure that only the right people have access to your data, and then audit, which allows you to verify that everything is set up correctly. Yeah, I can get us started on encryption and transit and addressed. Um, I think at a very high level, uh, Amazon S3 uh, provides the capability for you to achieve end-to-end -end encryption. Right? Uh, you can encrypt data client-side using the encryption SDK. Uh, makes it really easy to encrypt data even before you send it to S3. Uh, you can encrypt your data in transit. Uh, the new minimum is TLS 1.2. Um, and you know, data is encrypted at re before it's stored at rest. Uh, so we provide multiple server-side encryption offerings uh, that customers can choose uh, to meet their needs. Um, I think it's interesting to look at that in a little more detail, right? So what happens to your data when it comes to S3? How do we encrypt it? So object data comes in, it's encrypted with the new data key that we generate, it's stored durably, and then the options for what to do with that data key come into play, right? Um, so the default encryption is S3 managed keys, SSCS3. This is the base layer of encryption that all customers get on new objects, um, starting earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, Customers can also choose to use uh, AWS KMS. That's our key managed service. Um, so you know you could use keys with KMS to do either SSE KMS or DSSE KMS. 
two options uh, using the key managed service where uh, you can uh, you know meet your specific regulatory needs optionally you could use bucket keys uh, so it's an interesting way in which we cache keys that provides you with the same uh, security posture that you want uh, while also reducing cost to KMS, like the number of calls you make. Um, customers saved over $80 million uh, with bucket keys since we launched. Um, and then the last option is uh, using the key for the request. So customers can send us the key with the request, uh, and then you know we encrypt the object, we destroy the key. And then to reaccess the object later on, you need to provide us with that key. Um, I think Going back to what Brian was talking about, right? Like looking at that scale, uh, it's we can look at that scale here with you know customer managed encryption on one end and the Amazon S3 managed encryption at the other. Um, the way that I like to think about it is thinking on three factors, right? Uh, what's going to happen with compute? I need to you know compute encryption. Uh, what's going to happen uh, with how the key is stored and how the key is managed? Um, client side encryption. All three of those um, happen with the customer, right? The customer does all three of them. Um, SSCC, uh, <coughs> they take care of the key management and the key storage while compute falls on um, you know, S3. SSC KMS, DSSC KMS, uh, the customer only needs to care about the key management. We do the key storage, we do the compute. And then SSC S3 at the furthest end where S3 takes over all of this responsibility for the customer. Um, yeah. Back to you, Brian. So access control is what people traditionally think of as security, right? When you talk about you know the gate co code that gets you in or the, the key for a door or the card that gets you through a badge reader, uh, these are ways to make sure that only the right person has access to you know the resources behind that door, behind that gate. Uh, in AWS, that gate is enforced by policy. This policy language is the same across all of our services. It's used everywhere. And you can see that we uh, allow you, therefore, to put policy restrictions in place uh, wherever it makes sense for your enterprise. That might be at the specific user or role level. It might be at a higher level within your organization. Uh, you might want to set a policy on your network or even on your S3 resources. And so we uh, support these policies at every one of those levels through different APIs, both in AWS IAM, AWS organizations, but also within S3. Uh, S3 also has some additional layers of security on top of that, where in addition to your access point and bucket policies, we support block public access. Block public access is a feature that uh, protects you from too broad a policy so that you don't inadvertently grant more access than you intended. It prevents the setting of new bucket policies and quarantines away resources if they ever do become too public. That's now on by default for all new buckets. We also, uh, at the same time, changed our default behavior for buckets to specifically uh, default off our access control list feature. That's a, an earlier version of policies uh, that uh, you no longer have to worry about if you've turned on uh, the object ownership controls on your bucket. Uh, so that's off by default for all new buckets, and that opts you into a policy-only uh, method of doing access control in your AWS resources. Now, all these policies all work together. There's not like a precedent rule or anything, uh, but we evaluate those policies all together, and we do that to make sure that we enforce two invariants. The first is that you have been explicitly allowed and not denied by the caller's account. So an IAM user or a role can never do anything that its account doesn't allow. But then we also want to make sure that you are always allowed and not denied access by the resource owner. In S3's case, the bucket owner or the access point owner. Uh, we want to make sure that you never uh, are ever able to grant access to a, uh, an S3 object that, where the bucket owner did not uh, comply with that. So we're going to make sure that that's enforced for both of those authorities. But then we're also, if the traffic came from a VPC, we're going to enforce the same sort of a restraint uh, based on the VPC owner's uh, controls. And then if there are any downstream resources like KMS keys, uh, we're going to make sure that you are correctly authorized on every one of those resources. And now just like we've been talking about with encryption options or with tooling in general, uh, policies apply at many different granularities. So we can think about all the different types of policy that might apply to an S3 request as 
fitting along this same sort of a spectrum or a scale from very, very granular tight controls all the way up to very global or broad reaching controls. Uh, session policies or role policies might control what an individual user can see or can access within S3, where permission boundaries might put some, some guardrails on that and only allow them access to some specific things. High-level policies like organization policies might restrict you from whole swaths of data and say that you only have access to a specific set of buckets. Then on the resource side, uh, block public access will prevent any public access at all. Bucket policies can be more specific than that and can grant or allow specific access. And then access point policies allow you to modularize those bucket policies and grant use case specific access. You might create an access point for a specific caller or for a specific use case. If you want all of your read only access to go through one access point and all your read write access to go through another, those can have different policies that are sh sure not to interfere with each other. So this brings us to the third of our security triad. This is the uh, audit story. And this is the unloved child <laughs> of the three. This yep. is the one that customers that we talk to uh, routinely are you know, maybe not considering as carefully as they should. Audit means not just uh, making sure that you look at all of your logs, but it also means looking at your current configuration and proactively making sure mm -hmm. that you don't have anything misconfigured. So when we talk about inspecting your resource configuration, we've got a lot of AWS options for that. The one we want to really highlight is the first here, AWS IAM Access Analyzer for S3. Access Analyzer is a great and free tool that every customer should try out that allows you to inspect your S3 resources. It looks at all of the policies involved, all the different access controls, and tells you exactly who has access to your S3 buckets and access points. Other options here, like AWS Config, can tell you whether you've correctly set up your bucket policy or whether you've consistently applied bucket policies across many buckets. Inventory reports can give you uh, aggregate data across all of your objects in S3. Storage Lens uh, also tells you, you know, about your S3 usage in aggregate. Amazon Macy helps you find sensitive data that's stored in S3, and Trusted Advisor recommends best practices to you based on inspection of your configuration. So all those tools are going to help you look at your existing current configuration and decide whether that meets your organization's needs. Now, on the other hand, you also need to monitor what actually happens. It's so easy to look at our configuration and assume we got it all right, but if you want to make sure that nothing has been accessed that shouldn't have been, you want to monitor access. And your primary options for that are S3 server access logs and AWS CloudTrail. CloudTrail is uh, the preferred of those two options, and it's going to also feed in through our event system. So you may have seen things about Amazon Event Bridge and Amazon Guard Duty. Uh, those features piggyback on the same stream of events. So when we uh, talk about all these features, they fit onto a spectrum, just like we've talked about with uh, access control or with encryption, from very, very granular ones like inventory reports, all the way up to wide scale organization level or enterprise level views of your data. So access analyzer for S3, like we recommended, that's our number one go-to spot for who's got access to your S3 data, that's somewhere in the middle. It's going to look at all of the access control for all of your buckets, where inventory reports are going to get down to the level of individual objects, and tools like Storage Lens or Config are going to give you more of an enterprise view in aggregate of what your data storage is doing. So the great thing about this event stream that feeds server access logs, CloudTrail, and EventBridge is that that is actually accessible to you as a S3 customer. And so while uh, CloudTrail and server access logs will record that log data for uh, later inspection, with Amazon EventBridge, you can act on that data in real time. Uh, you can do that with arbitrary compute. Uh, we see a lot of customers using Lambda functions that just watch those event streams and then inspect the events that occur. They'll uh, then act on that in real time. So they can remediate any kind of an access control problem you know, within minutes of somebody setting the wrong policy. One uh, really cool uh, aspect of audit that I think is underrepresented in our messaging is that access audit uh, allows you to not just uh, like reactively look at what's been done, but also proactively adopt new features. Mm -hmm. 
right? So when you're worried about, you know, here's this new block public access thing, is it okay to turn that on? Is that going to break my application, right? Or here's this new uh, object ownership setting that seems like it would simplify my life, but what if my system relies on some of those old controls? Mm -hmm. We're providing means for you to go and audit whether those older controls are being used. And so uh, we're pleased to announce that the recent launch of Ackles and Amazon S3 inventory reports. Uh, this is a new feature of inventory reports that gives you information about individual object ACLs in those aggregate reports. Um, that saves you uh, the effort, the uh, undifferentiated heavy lifting of individually accessing every one of those objects to find their access control lists. Uh, it means that you don't heat up those objects from an intelligent tiering perspective. And it provides all that information in one place so that you can easily find out which ones of your objects have ACLs enabled. That's super important if you're going to take the next step and comply with best practices, like disabling ACLs across all of your objects. We also uh, previously launched the support in our server access logs mm -hmm. so that you can see whether ACLs have been used. So between inspecting server access logs to see if ACLs have been used at all, inspecting your inventory reports here uh, to see if ACLs exist on your objects that you maybe could be used in the future, you can find out if there's any dependency on the older access control model. And when you find that there's none, you can move into that new uh, policy only world. Thanks. So key takeaways. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Brian. Um, I think I'd focus at S3 is you know, raising the bar. Um, AWS, we usually talk about, you know, we have uh, better instances. Uh, we have these launches on a, you know, sort of, very normal cadence. We talk about increasing efficiency. We talk about ease of use. And you know, today we're also talking about raising the bar on security. Like, can we build tools that are available for customers regardless of where they are on their journey, right? Uh, it's, I think using the example you used before, uh, maybe you're a very small startup with a few objects uh, and you need very granular level details. Maybe you're a large enterprise with thousands of accounts, tens of thousands of buckets, and you need that. We offer that for customers. Um, the recent Amazon S3 security updates, um, all objects encrypted by default with SSE S3. So, uh, you know, a great baseline default encryption offering for all customers. TLS 1.2 is the new minimum TLS uh, protocol, offers better handshake, better security uh, when transiting data. Uh, DSSE KMS for highly regulated customers. Um, S3 BP block public access by default. Um, ACLs turned off by default, I think, as you covered. Such a big deal. Such a big deal. And then, uh, you know, ACLs in metrics, in server access logs and crowd tail logs. So that's to audit whether ACLs were used to gain access to your objects in the past. And then ACLs in inventory reports to, uh, you know, check for the existence of ACLs. And, you know, just to sort of bump up what you said, you could run inventory reports and, you know, buckets with a billion objects of them and get, you know, all of those ACLs compiled together for you to be able to query. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I think, a great win for customers today. Um, I think all of that lets customers focus on higher level decisions, right? Um, what's the specific compliance regime for my industry I need to meet? Um, where does my data need to be located so that I'm compliant with data residency requirements? Uh, and how do I ensure my data is discoverable to the right people in my organization? I want to enable them to do things quickly with their data in the cloud, but also ensure the incorrect folks don't have access. Uh, and so all of our tooling is geared towards taking away that undifferentiated heavy lifting uh, and letting customers focus on these high level decisions. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you very much.